In this video, I will show you how you can use a ggplot2 web application to visualize time series data. So as an example, I'm going to pull some data from Yahoo Finance. So in this case, I want to visualize the stock prices of the Adobe stock from the past couple of months. So for example, I'm going to type here Adobe. Well, this shows an overview of the uh, financial data of uh, Adobe. Well, Yahoo has a nice option to export historical prices. Uh, I'm mostly interested in the recent fluctuations of the price, so I'm just going to export data since the beginning of the year. Now, this shows an overview, and at the bottom there is a link to download this as a spreadsheet, so that's what I want. And I'm going to save that on my desktop. All right. Let's open the ggplot2 web application. Now, the most tricky thing about visualizing uh, time series data is to actually get your data in the right format in the program. And what I mean by that is um, when you upload your file, in the current version, all the variables are by default assumed to be either a numeric variable or a factor. So the current version of the application does not automatically recognize dates as being a date. So we will have to do that manually at some point. And in order to convert a variable to a date, it's important to be aware of the format of the date. So in our case, the data is supplied in a format in which we have the year in four digits, then a dash, then the month in two digits, then a dash, and then the day number in two digits. So if we import this data, we can already see in the data panel that our variable date is, has in fact not been recognized as being a date, but it's currently a factor. And what this results in is that once you draw a plot, this is very ugly. You can see that that the labels on the x-axis they are uh, they are overlapping and uh, the dots they are uh, incorrect. And even if we try to add a smooth line, it will simply not appear. And the reason for that is that currently the program thinks that date is a factor, so it just thinks that every separate value of a date is a separate category, and that's not what we want. So we have to convert it to a date by dragging it into the date folder. Uh, and when, when you're trying to convert a variable to a date or a time, you will be asked for the format of the date in your data. So in our case, this is the format. We have the year in four digits, and then the month in two digits, and then the day in two digits. And these formats are defined by these codes. So for example, percent %d is the day number. So you can also import dates or times that are in a completely different format using these special codes. And you can look up these codes on this page. So for example, here you can see that a capital Y is the year number in four digits and a small Y would be the year number in two digits and so forth. Anyway, our format is just this default format. So we press OK and then we will see that the date has now appeared within the date folder. And if we redraw this plot, that's what we want. Now the program has recognized that this variable is in fact a date and can be treated as a date. And now the smoothing line is correct and the labels are correct. And so now our data is in the correct format. We can hide the data panel because we won't need it anymore. And we can redraw the plots so it fits our screen again. Well, let's see what we can do with this. So we currently have two layers in our plot. Uh, a smoothing layer and a point layer. Well, I'm just going to remove the smooth layer for now because I don't really need it. Well, one thing that people in stocks are generally interested in is the is the highest value of a stock and the lowest value of a stock during the day. So we can do that, for example, with a error bar GRM. So if we add the error bar layer, and we try to draw the plot, it gives an error because we didn't uh, specify the aesthetics of the error bar yet. In order to draw an error bar, we have to specify which variable in our data set defines the top value and which value in our data set defines the bottom value of the error bar. So for example, 
within the error bar layer I'm gonna map the Y min to the low value in the data set and I'm gonna map the Y max to the highest value in the data set. And if I redraw the plot you will see an error bar plot so the dots in our plot currently define the closing value of a stock for every day and the error bars show the highest and the lowest price that that stock reached during the day. Well, now I'm not really happy with these points because they're black and the error bars are also black so that's not really clear so I'm gonna just gonna change the color to the points to red wheel quick. And I want the error bars actually to be blue I think. Yes, let's make them blue. Well, I think the error bars are a little too much here, so I'm just going to make them transparent for about 50% by setting the alpha to 0.5. Now, I changed my mind about the smoothing. I do want the smoothing in my thingy, so I'm just going to add the smooth layer again. But I'm actually not really interested in this gray error thing, so I'm just going to disable the standard error of that. And I want this line actually to be black. Yes, that's better. And I want it to be dashed. And now, for example, I want to emphasize the $35 value because it's a psychological barrier. So I'm just going to add a horizontal line with an intercept at 35 And I want this line to be dashed. No, I want it to be dot dashed. And I want the color to be green. This shows our final plot, which is just an aesthetic miracle. And because I like it so much, I'm gonna export it to PDF format. So, and this can take a while sometimes. Uh, so we just have to wait for that. And then the link appears here. So now this gives you a a high quality PDF version of the plot that we just made. And the only thing it's still missing I noticed now is that it doesn't have a title so we might fix that in a version. But hey, it's pretty nice already. Alright, thanks for watching.